For the first time, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abe Ahmed has spoken about the possibility of peace negotiations with the Tigrayan rebels. The two sides have been locked in a war for more than 19 months. The Abe Ahmed government has now created a committee to hold these negotiations. The committee will be headed by the Deputy Prime Minister Demeke Mekonen and will draft a report detailing the preconditions for negotiations. The committee has 10 to 15 days to chalk out details of negotiations. The comments follow the government's declaration of an indefinite humanitarian truce in March. It is a key step towards peace negotiations with forces from the rebellious northern region of Tigray. The chairman of the Tigray People's Liberation Front is ready to send a delegation. In an open letter published on Twitter, the group said that it was prepared to participate in a credible, impartial and principled peace process. But it lashed out at the mediation efforts led by the African Union envoy. The TPLF happens to be a former rebel army turned political party. It dominated national politics for nearly three decades until Abe's appointment in 2018. The TPLF has repeatedly said that Western Tigray is a non-negotiable part of Tigray. The region has been occupied by the Amhara forces since the war erupted in November 2020. The TPLF has already asked the UN Security Council to ensure the withdrawal of Amhara and Eritrean forces from the region. Ethiopia is Africa's second most populous nation. The nearly two-year conflict in the country has displaced more than two million people and killed thousands of civilians. The humanitarian situation in Tigray is also dire. Parts of Tigray have plunged into famine-like conditions. According to the United Nations, more than 9 million are left in need of food aid. The region still remains without essential services such as electricity, communication and banking. Now, for more on this, we have our correspondent, Coletta Van Johi, joining us from Addis Ababa. Coletta, thanks for joining us. How do you view this news development, the possibility of peace negotiations with Tigray and Rebel? Can this actually happen, especially after, after the war and the bloodshed that we've seen? Well, I think what we are seeing now is some positive development, if I would use those words, in terms of uh, peaceful resolution to the conflict that has uh, spanned over uh, a year and a half now and caused um, a humanitarian crisis. So we've seen the government, <coughs> excuse me, of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, in Parliament yesterday saying that um, uh, the government uh, has an appetite for, for peace talks but, and negotiations, but he said this has to be studied first. So, I, I mean, in, just like in, in, the, uh, in the story that you've played, uh, the Prime Minister explained that a, a study committee has been has been uh, appointed under the Deputy Prime Minister, which is supposed to look at the, the, the modalities of what it would take for peace negotiations in a way that will not hinder or not affect national um, uh, security. And after that, the government uh, will receive the report and see the way forward. That's on the other side of the government. On the TPLF side, we've seen them giving an affirmative position, saying that they are willing to have uh, peace uh, talks uh, under, uh, I mean, a group um, to be held in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, to be held by Kenya and they apart from that they want uh, the United Nations the African Union European Union uh, the US you know all this to be part of that so both sides expressing the need for, for for peace but they've not really compromised on how this should go uh, should go forward right absolutely Coletta just to follow up to that if a resolution does indeed come about how will it change the politics in the region and also the fate of the residents the millions who have been displaced the communication blackout prevents crucial uh, services, essential services from going to the region, including food aid. Will this get resolved? Well, um, a peace process, beginning a peace process will be, will be quite good, especially for a return to normalcy of the situation, especially in the northern region, as well as other regions that have been affected, not only the Tigray region, but neighboring regions. Uh, it will kind of open up for, 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 for people to get services that they're not getting right now because of the conflict. It will open up for people to have a healing process because healing is very important. It will open up for maybe a national dialogue for also other issues that are still affecting the country in other places uh, because we know conflict that has spanned for over 
one and a half years has really brought up so many other complications. You know, there's a humanitarian crisis. Um, people, people, people cannot be able to till their land anymore. People live in fear. Others have been forced to be uh, IDPs and all that. So a peace process beginning will, will, will be quite a, a great step in terms of people returning to normalcy. It will take time once they begin, uh, and we know it might not uh, be getting from other peace processes in the continent. It will really take a lot of time, but if both parties really have good intentions, then uh, that should be something that uh, all the Ethiopians should be able to embrace. Absolutely, Coletta. Thanks so much for all those inputs, and thanks for joining us on Beyond World is One at this hour. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.